course. <clears throat> Introduce myself a bit. Don't want to dilly dally too long on myself. My name is Ryan Stanfield. I uh, design director at Kaizen Brand Evolution. Um, this is our lovely studio that we, we have uh, currently sort of half full uh, <laughs> at the at the minute with the other half working from home, which is which is great being able to do that. Uh, but our our studio is uh, located on York Street. Um, beautiful big uh, building in the middle of the, of the mill uh, sort of centre there. Um, myself, um, I've been sort of in, in design and branding for over 12 years now. Um, I'm a member of the ISTD uh, and, an, and an assessor there. I have been for a few years um, assessing typography. Also a member of the Institute of Designers in Ireland um, and other professional bodies uh, you know, ac across design in the UK. Um, yeah, that's me, um, and I, I'm going to take you through a bit of our of our process and a bit bit more about the studio, just to give you an introduction. This is just in terms of business. What 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 we are as a, as an agency, in case you weren't aware, what we offer and, and and what we do day to day. We're a creative agency in Belfast, specialising in brand identity, graphic design, and web and web design. Our unique approach delivers deep, meaningful change across our clients' businesses, and that's really the difference between us. And a typical sort of graphic design house that you may um, you may be familiar dealing with. We're we're interested in results. Uh, we're ambitious, and we love to see our clients grow and get real kind of benefit out of design and branding where it can be measured. I suppose that's super important in e-commerce as well. Understanding that um, conversion rate of what you put into your brand and what you put into your your advertising can actually bring back to your website. Of course whenever you're spending money on SEO or Google ads or whatever it needs to be online, your branding must tally along with those because otherwise it would simply be a waste of money. If your identity isn't communicating correctly um, and you're spending money on advertising online to drive traffic back to your website, then the sort of the point is lost. We're very interested in delivering change for the good. This should give you a bit of a flavour of some of the recent branding projects we've been involved in. Um, hopefully there should be at least one in there that you recognise. Um, and we are an agency that works across all types of businesses, all businesses really. Um, there's, no, there, there's no business we haven't worked with, I wouldn't say. Um, I say that every year and then all of a sudden we're working for, you know, an antibodies firm in Belfast that, cures or delivers cancer drugs into the human body you know there's something every different something always different in branding which is i suppose one of the main um the, the main kind of benefits of working in a branding studio the variety that you get to work on but i'll tell you this the it doesn't matter if we're working on uh, mirror media united wines boojum or coca-cola the process and the thought behind how we create identities campaigns messaging and strategies for both online and, and, and physical businesses, it, it will never change. It never, hasn't changed in, since the beginning of, of, of branding. And I'm gonna to touch on the beginning of branding and just to give you guys an insight in terms of why, why it's important uh, to brand yourselves correctly and also how to do that in 2020 and beyond. So that gives you an idea of the sort of level of, of work we're, we're working with. Now, what is a brand? I'd love to be in an auditorium here and like take take questions or <laughs> see a raise of hands. I'm sure you can raise your hands. It doesn't matter. We'll think about this at the end. So in terms of what people think is a brand, I'll give you a bit of a generalization. If I was to say, ask my mum, for example, mum, what's a brand? She would probably turn around and say, um, I don't know, like the, the logo, probably. And that's probably 80% of the general public's answer. Your brand is your logo. Well, I, I can assure you that it's not. Um, your brand, your logo is your logo. <laughs> uh, your brand is a lot more than that. Um, and that's what we deliver. Um, so when you're thinking about your brand identity, you're thinking about a multitude of aspects from, you know, how your language is whenever you answer the phone, um, what your sign off is on an email signature, what your uniform is. So everything all encompassed. So what is a brand? Let's explore that. First of all, might as well start at the very start. Is it a logo? 
a lot of these brands can stand on their logos and you get a feeling for what you're going to experience whenever you deal with each of these logos. But that experience that you're feeling when you're, you know, in front of one of these logos is is all of the work that's been done to that brand in the background. For instance, when you see a Starbucks logo, you're probably emotionally connected to how the coffee tastes, um, how the environment feels whenever you go in and stand in the queue or get a seat in one of their in one of their um, you know, one of their shops. How you feel when you walk walk out of the place with the the Starbucks um, takeaway cup. So you're kind of getting all that. You're kind of transported by that by that logo, and the logo is simply the signal to the wider brand identity. Brands come in all shapes and sizes. Of course, we can associate uh, a brand with anything, really. You know, even today, um, whenever you're dealing with the likes or shopping, uh, you'd be faced with the likes of. Marks and Spencers for your groceries, or um, if if you're fortunate, um, of course, <laughs> Sainsbury's and Little. I just wanted to talk about Little a wee bit more and how they're a successful brand. Little market um, their own sort of produce and products in a way that is based around value, and the understanding that they're targeting a value customer is very, very smart, and on purpose and they know that they're targeting a sort of value customer in terms of people know that they're going to want a little and spend a little less to get a little more which is probably one of their slogans if it isn't send me the bill little. but what i'm trying to get us get at is they don't try and look like marks and spencers because they aren't selling a similar sort of high-end product their logo is very brash thick bold almost looks like a kid's done it those big thick letters almost looks like a Lego blocko sort of thing. That is simply there to signal to your emotional sort of upbringing that this is a value place to go and shop. So it's a very smart brand project indeed. Brands can take other shapes and sizes. Brands can be people, pop stars, rock stars, how they act and what they do on Twitter. is just like a business and how they... Uh, send out products and deal with customer service online. Kanye West is a brand in himself, releasing clothing lines, whether it be music, um, even his um, profile uh, and high profile family and, 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 and wife and, and in-laws really. That's all branding. They're all set up to, to, to build a persona online so that people will Buy in and buy in on them, buy their products, go to their concerts. So they're acting a certain way, and that's just like a brand, just like a business acts. I always compare that to a number of businesses. You would see sort of like, okay, our business persona is very, very professional and cool. However, when you come in, it's a little bit different. The people are different. Making that 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 split between business and and internal kind of how your people are is, is very important because I'm sure the likes of Kanye West isn't as outrageous and stylish or whatever you may call it or creative all the time when he's with his family you know it's a, it's a persona it's a front and it's a very good one to create interest America is a brand um, and one of the kind of key components of how that is a brand is the, its flag this flag is used as a symbol for a protest and also in in the reverse you know you would see sort of rival countries burning the american flag you know that's their symbol of how they either love or hate the country so you can see how a flag is just as much as a brand you know as anything else it carries a certain weight to it. You know what you're going to get when you see the American flag. It represents different things to different people. And that's really the key components of brands. But where did it all begin? This is an outline of some original um, sort of brands that you would have seen out in sort of the 1800s, the Texas sort of um, plains and the farmers that used to... Uh, have problems with keeping cattle uh, within fences. 
sort of the origin of brand identities, I suppose. Um, and you can see each of them is a different, each of that, each of those names in the different list, in the list, sorry, are all different forms. So you think about number one there, number one, Helen, Abercrombie, Bernard, their mark or their brand that they used to create and brand their cattle with is this lovely D with an arrow shape. You can see they become quite intricate. Even this guy's tried to do like a bit of a diamond shape. Um, and then people are being a little bit more creative here with like a star, you know. This is the origin of identity. And it was really for set for purpose. And the purpose of these ones was really to make sure that people knew that if my cattle encroached on your land, you would know where to send them back. You would perhaps have a preconception of what my family is like because it's my family brand or what my farm is like, so my business. And my identity and my logo and, you know, what my, how my cattle look and feel is just the same as today. We're putting an identity on a website, on our social media mar marketing, whatever it is, or digital marketing, on our platform where we sell. It represents us and should represent what we do correctly. And each of these is sort of the, the honest reflection of that. The representation, the mark of the family, just really kind of pure branding, which I really love. I really love kind of research and that. It's just so nice to see some of these marks are fantastic. And of course, back then, we'd have been made out of steel um, and heated up. Um, probably in some sort of furnace and each each cattle would have been branded on the backside probably more than likely not too pretty but hey that's branding if i was to break it down for you i know everyone kind of is like oh it's your logo oh no it's not blah, blah, blah. this is how we break it down in terms of a brand your logo is what people see you know especially if you're marketing your your online business your logo is going to be one of the first things it's seen in a very small sort of atmosphere, sort of small, probably on the mobile um, or desktop or laptop. It's going to be one of the first things they see and interact with. It's It should do and say what you are all about. Underneath the surface of that iceberg is the brand. It's how your website functions. It's how your customer service um, respond. It's the, you know, the logistics after something perhaps is bought and received by a customer, that is the main element of your brand. That's what keeps the, you know, keeps the wheels moving and keeps your reputation at bay. Your logo should represent everything that goes on underneath, truthfully. For instance, as I was saying about Lidl, Lidl the shop sells value um, food, value fruit and veg, bread, that's everything that goes underneath. The logo represents that value because it looks kind of cheap. I'm not saying, no, nope, I'm not little bashing by any means. I think Little's a fantastic shop, fantastic brand, but it truthfully represents the value items that you're going to receive. So basically the, the story in that is, if you're selling fancy stuff, like let's break it down and be as easy as possible, your logo should probably look fancy because it needs to represent exactly your product. If you're selling balloons out of the back of a van at the Tuesday market. Your identity should probably look like that. It should probably look value. It should probably have a balloon in it. You know, there's no point trying to fluff up something that isn't there. It's all about telling the truth so that your customers understand what they're going to get. People don't have time to try and figure out something complicated. And how do you define it? This will lead into the importance of your branding as well. This is sort of the first step into introducing you guys into how important your brands are. How would you define it? How would you write it down? As I said earlier, it's quite hard to define. But here's some guys who really know what they're talking about. Marty Neumeyer is an American author and speaker who writes on the topic of brand design, innovation and creativity. He says a brand is a person's gut feeling about a product, service or organization. Okay. So gut feelings about online businesses tend to be, how easy are they to use? Is this brand sort of talking to me through its communications, advertising, imagery? Um, is it easy to use? Is it quick? You know, any, com any sort of stepping stones in the way of getting where you want to be online is always going to be like a bad feeling, uh, especially online. So it's your gut, gut reaction, your gut feeling towards a product service or organization, I think that's very true. 
Wally Owens, the late great Wally, Wally Owens, British practic- practitioner of corporate identity and branding, says it's all about belonging, belonging to a tribe, to a religion, to a family, it demonstrates that sense of belonging. It's a function of both the people who are part of the same group and also for those people who don't belong. So, so whenever you're talking about a brand, um, people want to hold the Starbucks cup, you know? They want the bag for Marks and Spencer's to be walking down the street with. You want to get more of a brand that you feel a part of, that you kind of worship, not like not making a religious sort of link there. I mean, it's all about being a part of the gang and making sure you're on top of things. In e-commerce, you know, there are certain religions out there. If you're an Amazon guy or girl, or if you're an eBay person, uh, if you're an Etsy person, you know, like these sort of online platforms or ASOS, you know, I swear by ASOS for clothes. It's exactly the same meaning. And finally, Jeff Bezos, uh, founder and chairman, chief executive of Amazon. If you don't know, how's that possible? Um, your brand is what other people say about you when you're not in the room. You know, how true is that? So. You could sell all day. You could meet the executives in the boardrooms and leave behind your lovely little business card. But if your lovely little business card doesn't represent what you've just delivered as a seal, the people who you've left it with will make assumptions just on your brand once you've left. So I'll give you an example of how pitching um, you know, would work in terms of you know, a business would receive perhaps 15 pitches uh, from different companies for say a building project and out of the 15 companies who've pitched three of them have spent money in their brand identity already they're ahead because they're visually more professional their corporate identity is is in line perhaps more with the uh, contract they're trying to win so that brings it down to three the th- you know how that's built down even further would be do, do these brands communicate what we're all about as a, as a, as a body who's giving out this contract. And that's where it starts to filter down. So your brand must do the selling for you when you're not there to do the selling, because if you get a salesman in front of someone, the sales done, you know, that's pretty much all what you hear, you know, get them in front of me, I'll make a sale. But what happens when the salesman's not there, your brand identity must do the selling for you. It must look good. It must represent what you're doing. If you're, you know, a corporate law firm, it must look like a corporate law identity. It must really speak that truth that you're all about. You know, if you're an online business selling toothbrushes at a very reasonable rate, your identity must say that and say it well. I'm going to bring you into, so that that just explains the sort of definitions of how important branding is. Um, and that covers everything, every type of brand, whether it's online, offline. Um, and just those three kind of examples really kind of ring home uh, and, re- and, and make total sense, especially to me who's designing brands all the time. It gives us real purpose. It's not a matter of us as a design team and branding agency going away. You tell it like a client telling us a brief and us kind of burrowing away, sticking our head down and designing something pretty. It's really not like that. It's more to do with this three key stage process. So investigate, design, and evolve. These are the three pillars that we use. I hate saying pillars, it's such a businessy jargon word, but it really is true. It's our three points that we make sure we do whenever we're creating a new brand or campaign or whatever. We must do investigation and then design follows that and then we evolve it to make sure that it's ready for market. I'll take you into investigation a bit just to show you how important it is to investigate before taking on a branding project. Very important. Ideas. You know, there's lots of different ways of achieving good ideas and really any, any good brand has a great idea behind it. And that, that sounds a wee bit fluffy. I, I understand, however, the importance of getting the right idea for your business rather than just saying, okay, right, we'll do my logo. I love green because that's the color of my football team. That has no meaning to anybody. Creating a good brand identity starts with the best ideas for how, how, to, how to tackle it. And ideas are just so important. And influence can come from anywhere. 
there are three get great responses responses and how to get good ideas. And this is the first one. I thought it was quite quite funny. Um by Michael Johnson, a fantastic sort of speaker on, on branding. So how do you get all your ideas, Ryan? You know, how, where do you get all your ideas from? You know, if somebody ever asks me that or anyone on the team, you know, typically, you know, this is the, one of the key responses. Of, well, I just, you know, have lots of ideas, you know, and that sounds, sounds a bit stupid. Sounds a bit nonsensical. It is, it is kind of sort of half true though. As a brand designer, you kind of always thinking about the next move and how you could use that in the future, whether it's a bit of language, a bit of identity, a color palette, an image. You know, having all those ideas always churning over your head is a fantastic way to have lots of ideas. And I know entrepreneurs, especially online, are exactly the same. People with existing businesses online or starting a new business, full of ideas. So that's one good way of getting a good one. There we classic crappy ice stock photo for you all about getting ideas. The second most common response about how you get a good idea is by having lots of influences. Now, influences are very important. Some people think that you just pull ideas from thin air and oh, you, you didn't just think that up. But if you think about any practice, any creative business or practice, as I said, whether it be music, art, fine art, graffiti, design your ideas even though they may seem like they come from from nowhere are actually you kind of tapping into what you've seen previously um there's a neurological link between what you have experienced what you've been exposed to and what you like and how you get those ideas from head onto paper and everything you do are influenced influences you know whether it's an influence from a movie you've seen i'm just taking sort of key examples whether it's an influence from a song lyric you've heard to do something but it's an influence of seeing somebody doing something and you kind of go and i could do that better online i'm sure a lot of you in this group have been influenced in some way or other by some idea or seeing something so getting lots of influences is always you know, a great way of spawning a fantastic new idea. Here's some examples of influences designers would use, whether it's online libraries and um, looking at lovely books on logos all day. You know, it sounds boring, but it's it's it's. I promise you, it's not. Um, our libraries are filled in home and it's in our studio of loads of different experimental ways of using brands, identities, photography, art direction, language, type fonts, and families and, and different logo marks. So that's how we, we kind of build our influence. We expose ourselves to a lot, whether it's good, bad, whether it's German from the USA, from Northern Ireland, you know, it's all about opening your eyes and getting those influences in so that we can put them through the creative filter and come up with the most intelligent branding. And the third reason of where ideas come from is I'm not really sure they just happen. Now, that sounds like crazy talk. Like an idea just came to me in my sleep or in my dreams. And I'm sure a lot of you have had that sort of eureka moment where you've kind of thought about something before you go to sleep and, or maybe not before you go to sleep, whenever. And then it just comes to you, like an idea comes to you. That's the same in branding as well. And it happens quite a lot. I'm not really sure they just happen, the ideas for branding. And to be honest, it always kind of happens with me whenever I'm relaxed. This is my dog, really. So I would always take my dog out for a walk. If I've came home from work and I've maybe had a few briefs uh, given to me in the studio for new brands that are coming out or even naming brands or else creating a new website or something like that. And I find the ideas start, start to come whenever you're more relaxed. So it's a fantastic way of showcasing where they come from and how important they can be and how you know important it is for a brand that your ideas and your research is conducted correctly you know bombard yourself with influence take your time at it don't rush into things and of course eventually hopefully that magic will happen when you're out walking your dog at lovely castle well in forest park like i did 
this is another thing in terms of investigation. <clears throat> this is quite key in coming up with your ambition as a business. Now, this is something we send out as a studio um, for any client that comes on board who wishes to go through the branding process with us. This is so that we understand all of the information and have, we, and have investigated your business and got on board with you as much as we possibly can. A branding studio such as ours only has a small window of opportunity to get on board with where you are and how long you've been thinking about this business. You know, you're talking two months tops to be getting involved and to basically change the path of your brand. So asking these questions, all, you know, all key points before starting and, and managing and running your brand as sort of watertight as you possibly can, starting off with why are we here? Why are we doing this? You know, why are we setting up this online business? What's the point? <laughs> I didn't mean that. Why are we here? Okay, we're here to sell toothbrushes because I could not get toothbrushes for love or money. And that's just a silly example. What makes us different? Okay, well, our toothbrushes come from Croatia and the Croatian toothbrushes are far better than any other toothbrushes. Like, I'm just talking nonsense now. What's our personality? Well, this is an important one. Our brand personality, we're all about fun. We like to pick up the phone and be relaxed because buying toothbrushes is super fun. Or else we're really strict. Like, we're a real corporate monster here. And when you bring us, it's real posh and super sort of, you know, straight down the middle. Um, kind of professional that's our personality what's our ambition okay our ambition is to uh, build a website for two years sell the business in three years that's a perfectly fair and very common ambition what do we value the most well we value you know oral hygiene the most you know as an example what do we do and how do we do it? Well, we get the best toothbrushes and we get them to you within two working days. Nobody else can do that. And who are we here for? We are here for the young professional who has a bit extra money to buy a good toothbrush. Now, I'm not trying to sell toothbrushes. I'm just giving that as an example because if I was to start a toothbrush company that sold online and only got our toothbrushes from Croatia, this is all totally made up. These are the sort of answers that I'd be looking for before I started my brand because each of the answers in this um, diagram are like you know unicorn juice to a brand designer because they are key bits of information that influence design what's our personality I said fun at the start now what fun changes for a graphic designer and a brand designer is okay the language is going to be fun the colors are going to be fun now, if you were to say, what's our personality? Super corporate and strict and very professional. You're talking toned down a wee bit, a wee bit more sort of elegant um, and a wee bit more corporate. So a lot of these answers to these questions make massive differences whenever you were des designing it. And that's why it's so important to answer your ambition graph, this, your ambition chart, sorry, as we call it. If every question is answered in the ambition chart, the brand designer has enough fuel to give you a truthful brand identity that will work for you you know that's this is the probably the biggest most important thing you could you could answer before you start or as you're maybe perhaps thinking of rebranding but can you answer all those questions you know some people can't and it's crazy because you should be able to basically have a stab at all that and once that's done does your brand identity reflect those things a lot of the time it's 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 not really is the answer Okay. So that was all investigation. Just showing you how important it is to investigate and figure out what you're doing first before you design. As I said, how important is it to learn and gather and get good ideas and think about your ambition chart before you get going and near your brand identity? This is so important for e-commerce because E-commerce is such a saturated market that you need to stand out. And without that first investigation stage and being truthful and going through those processes, ambition charting and stuff like that, you know, 
some people just can just fall in line then you just become another carbon copy of your competitor which is something you definitely don't want to do the investigation stage proves that proves the uniqueness of your business and how you are different and then the branding will reflect that and this is into the design stage which is the lovely kind of nice looking part which is easily kind of brought together following investigation so in design we put it all together we put the results of investigation into practice and this is really high highlighting the importance of design this is Pontchartrain race course you may or may not be familiar with them they had an identity that spanned sort of I would say 30 years their previous identity was drawn by a cartoonist from a 70s newspaper which was unbelievable <clears throat> what we did was re restyle, reevaluate, redesign the entire offering at Pontchartrain from the identity to the uh, art direction, the mascot here, lovely little fox, um, and rejigged everything based on their their ambition chart. They uh, they told us they had a much more refined audience. They were interested in um, young professionals and and filling the corporate seats. Turns out horse racing isn't actually about horse racing anymore. It's about putting bums on seats and filling the corporate hospitality tent and a brand identity that reflected the price tag, you know, of a ticket to a Pontchartrain race day. This just evokes exactly what they were saying. And as soon as they seen that on the first day of the presentation, they ran with it. This proves that listening to our clients and listening to your truth and listening to your answers to your ambition chart, the design is easy because we know what to do when we have a good brief. So that's Pontchartrain's new identity. Tools Bet, I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with Tools Bet. Um, online, primarily now, um, last year, they, they approached us. Actually, it was a part of a pitching process that we won. And from their bricks and mortar stores across Northern Ireland, I believe they have something like 52 tools betting units or whatever it is but their plan is always to go online um, and reflect this toolsbet.com new name that they, it came up with to to compete alongside the likes of paddy power which people which people would know um, and to reflect a sort of personality for that the personality of tools bet was fun and engaging because that's what that sort of area should be you know it adds a bit of spice to your to your sport, uh, whether it's football, rugby, horse racing, whatever, Tools Bet is going to do that for you. Now, their previous identity was extremely dated, and by extremely, I mean I don't even think it was a logo. I think it was, I think it was made by a sign maker, perhaps, but it was. It, it's completely different. This is more for a digital, online audience. This particular identity, so soft, heavy, personable letters here they almost look friendly like the letters are having a laugh you know it's kind of heavy this this font itself is called fat frank and it's kind of bent over to the side it looks like little smiles are going on which is lovely and kind of reflects what they want to do if you think about paddy power and how funny it is this is the sort of line that they want to go the little dot is just a little icing on the cake uh for this logo as it's a coin um entering a slot which is sort of the um the the origins of what tools bet is you know coins going into slot machines it just kind of solidifies that part with a beautiful gradient so this is the first part of the design the logo here's the logo for tribal burger you know straightforward clean it's a burger it's letters what else can we do is it the logo is the first part we'd always look at and then of course the campaign down royal fantastic example of how the identity evolved from what it was and a smart campaign that revolves around dr down royal dr drama dress up you know all the key things that you do at the race days um at down royal race course we rebranded them in 2017 um and it's a great case study for focus and investigation because we spent a lot of time investigating you can imagine a fresh face myself and the md or md connor um getting introduced to horse racing for the first time kind of properly where we're we're thinking about you know different bridal wear on horses you know different ground that, that they're running on we get so deeply in in tune with your business and what you do that we can we become fans of it if i'm really honest you know 
horse racing now we're so knowledgeable on it on the different types of racing the different types of horses jockeys uh, race days events and benefits and you know peaks and troughs that we're able to create a clever trustworthy truthful brand campaign and identity for the business so again that reflects back to the identity stage but this is a great translation of what we learned you know we learned that the, the identity needed a real good refresh the colors were part and parcel of the down royal but also they needed a younger audience as well so this really reflects and you know communicates to a younger crowd the colors are a bit more less traditional than you would usually see at a race course the horse is cut out you know and on this lovely pink background very modern way of tackling the uh, race course identity this is lean bean um a healthy eating uh chain down south um it's all across sort of you know dublin industrial estates i believe there's a couple of them now that, that, that they're rolling out and the identity is such an important phase of this um and a stage one where we get this right they want to do do apply to a business market but showcase how how well um their healthy lunches can be in comparison to an old ham sandwich or mcdonald's which is around the corner in these industrial states down south and eat smart became the uh, the headline for this brand so we're getting a wee bit more into language however it highlights the importance of getting everything right from the start from your investigation, making sure that's all correct, your ambition, your logos, and then now this little extra bit that we call your language. Eat smart, lean bean, looks fresh, modern. McQuillan Companies, you know, a business that's been going for over a hundred years, a family business that we're going online, finally, properly, um, required a modern identity, not just for their online end of things but also on the roads as well started off with this beautifully beautifully crafted logo mark uh, paired with the the modern um heavy headline typography if you're familiar with mcquillan what they do is all types of services from tarmacking the roads to quarry work to environmental waste um and loads of loads of sort of environmental kind of based um uh, work and you can see the corners of the of the identity just reflect the the sharp edges of um of of construction and building work and environmental and digging up the roads and all that sort of stuff it just works perfectly for them so all you've seen there is your logos for the businesses so each of them are simply your logo marks and that's always the first stage that we address logo is so important to get right because your logo should work in every scenario big small black white on image off image on instagram as an avatar and off it the second component is your language earlier on i was discussing the three sort of components of and process of how we make something or make a brand succeed language is a part of the branding process in design where we're crafting and designing your language and this is this is sort of the extension of the logo projects you've just seen so here we have punches time so as part of the branding we developed this language set for them go to town get out of town you know all these kind of great strap lines and, and ad words that you could use for the younger market to get on board with for advertising go to town is obviously an extension of punches town surprisingly we were able to get on board with that even though leverage town exists which we we did we were there first we we own that town um strap line now so go to town is this language set that was able to elevate the brand and take people away from dublin really because punches town if you know is just outside it's in nice and it's a bit of a jaunt on a bus um but everyone calls that calls dublin town so if you're talking about going to town you're talking about now going to Pontius town there's a finance company that uh, we rebranded last year <clears throat> called white rock finance their language set was all about giving alternative finance to entrepreneurs who perhaps have been let down by the bank or maybe don't want to go to the bank for investment 
their language is all about investing in the brave. And that's how we defined what an entrepreneur was. Somebody who was brave and wanted to start their own business and, and, and really kind of this elevated the brand. You can, can you kind of see how we're starting to talk around your brand isn't just your logo now? It's just this, this bit of language just really, really elevates the brand. This is how we do and this is what, what we craft as part of it. It's tools bet. I told you. Three nil, no sweat. It's all about betting on the horse racing or betting on the football or betting on the rugby. This idea of I told you or you have been told is a play on the a play on the word. Much like in town, go to town, punch town. I told you three nil, no sweat, tools bet. It adds that personality, that extra um, bit of truth behind, you know, remember in the ambition, you know, what's our personality? The personality of tools bet is fun, Northern Irish, centric kind of slang and they can be really kind of free with their language which is great and then evolution the final stage so if you think about what we've designed and developed and translated through investigation if you're able to understand that for your brand and your business um online make sure that your ambition chart every box has been ticked who am i who am i here for why am i here put that through the the creative mill with with the branding shoe with us with whoever the design should flow easily from that once you know who you are you know there's no point trying to be something you're not so about understanding the truth the design then reflects that and then what we do after that is it create the language set so the identity the logo the art direction and the language set you know something that really kind of marries together and creates that overall brand that you and i know works if we're talking about that in day-to-day -day terms and what we know logo and language works think about mcdonald's you know obviously a different angle and you know there's good things and bad things about it but it's a fantastic brand identity fantastic logo everyone knows it and the language behind it i'm loving it you know if you were to say i'm loving it to someone without seeing the identity you would know it's mcdonald's you know so it's just to prove how important language is as well as your logo. Final stage is evolution, and that's preparing how your brand rolls out, you know, across your website, across your social, across your Google ads. I'm gonna show you the importance of evolution here. Evolving Pontius Town outside of the PDF was a massive undertaking. Um, we had to, after we thought about the logo, the language, and the art direction, we had to think about the stadium, branding horse quilts, branding pillars and maps and signage and fanfare, you name it, the entirety of Punchestown we worked on. And that's the evolution, the next stage of it. Think about that on your website. Once your branding is done, what else needs done? And it must be consistent. Every pick and piece of Punchestown that we did and rolled out across the brand was meticulously looked at from the ticket stub right up to the massive sort of 80 foot entrance into the winner's circle you know it's all about that next stage evolution making sure everything's done right tribal burger heavily involved in the shop fit out interior exterior signage obviously this is a bit different but obviously we did their website as well so you imagine us at the beginning translating what they want to do, who they are, what their personality is, creating the identity. It definitely is truthful to Tribal Burger. What's the next stage? Evolving this brand, bringing it to life, working on them, working with them on their facade, their signs, their menus, that evolution, making sure everything's consistent. And here's tools bet online as well in iPad format. You know, what's on the deli tonight? Don Oz are furious. All this extended advertising, we're working with these guys and it is so vital and so important that the rollout and the evolution of your brand and every single bit of advertising, marketing, design of your site, design of a new page, whatever it may be, product, you name it, is thought out and consistent. Because without that consistency, you, you're almost um, selling you're almost presenting as something you're not. I always give the example of 
everyone knows what, I don't know, Tommy Hilfiger aftershave is. And everyone knows whenever they receive a fake one or a fake, you know, yeah, one from on holidays or one from the market or something like that there. You can tell the difference between a Tommy Hill figure and a Tommy Hill finger, you know? That's the sort of emotional reaction you get when your brand isn't ruled out correctly, whenever it's inconsistent. So just say, I know nothing like this ha- has happened, but just say in Tribal Burger, we designed this beautiful brand for them, their bags, their menus, etc. Tribal Burgers in Botanic and uh, down beside City Hall um, at the minute. The name of that street has lost me. But anyway, imagine we did the identity and the process and the strategy for them, answered their ambition, and then they got someone who hadn't been through that process involved in the signage and the menu design, and it was disjointed. They didn't do that. They did it the proper way, which is have us work with them the whole time. It just helped justify everything, all the hard work that had been put in and everything they do, whether it's on social, on their website, is consistent and to the letter of the brand direction that we worked on. So consistency from the start and keeping it consistent is so important. And believe me, I and everyone knows whenever you've, you're, you've, you're in your own business or you're dealing with your own brand day in, day out, it can almost look boring to you. But you imagine the people that work at McDonald's who have seen these brands for 50 years, day in, day out. They must be pulling their hair out. But that consistency breeds confidence. This is another way of obviously getting your consistency up there in the third stage of evolution, getting your brand guidelines done, making sure that any any movement that you have communications-wise, brand-wise, follows these strict rules. And this is just an example of our evolution and what, what we would do for a business. We would think about their brand guidelines. We would think about their apparel, their uniform, whether it's a cap or t-shirt in store with Lean Bean. I'm kind of trying to use the same examples that we went through for logo and language, by the way. We would look at your vehicles, how they're branded up correctly, you know, by us, not some vehicle wrapper. So everything is done from design even down to the high-vis jackets, that guy's kind of hosing out some sewer of some sort, but the brand looks good. Signage, of course, you know, these are the evolution stages that need to be tightly, tightly thought about. Social media presence, this is a, a bar we done um, down south, consistently executing across every design outlet, whether it's signage, vehicles, social media, and this is the results, really. Some of the results we're happy to share with you guys. Um, and this just reflects what we were talking about. One of the first pages in the presentation is all to do with um, we're, we're interested in results. We, are in, we have a deep-seated sort of interest in making positive change for your business. You know, we want analytics. We want reviews we want to see what we did right and what we did wrong so we can always improve whenever the down royal changed its brand it received a 12 percent increase in footfall simply after the rebrand and that was all they changed apart from a sandwich deli counter the rebrand and advertising played a part in increasing 12 percent footfall that's insane 12 percent to a race course is massive Conscious Town increased to 326k visitors during their festival week. You know, that's a significant increase of, I believe, you know, I think it's something like 18,000 extra visitors. These are all targets that were set at the very start of the, the branding process. We want to see an increase here. We want to see an increase there. Well, let's, let's, let's work on the branding. Let's figure out the truth who you're trying to apply to, and we'll make sure the design suits that. Not only these increases did we see, but Down Royal, when we rebranded, this is such a coincidence, by the way, we had nothing to do with entering the, these, these things um, that I'm about to explain. Down Royal in 2017 won race course of the year. Now, that's down to a lot of things, the ground, the types of races. But the rebrand was done the same year. And funnily enough, in 2018, Pontus Town won the race course of the year. 
and they also changed their brand with us. So coincidence, I don't think so. Investment in their brand to be recognized by their peers as two of the best race courses in the country. And two of them used us as brand to rebrand. I think it's a fantastic testament to how identity and truthful sort of planning for your brand identity um, can prove uh, fruitful. And consistency, the final kind of bit in the presentation we're going to go through. Does everybody know this brand? My goodness, what a silly question, me even asking. Coca-Cola are obviously globally one of the biggest brands out there. Drinks market-wise, they don't obviously just do Coca-Cola. They own a number of businesses um, in food and drink and are sort of the leaders and the litmus test for success in branding and and products. The brand identity hasn't changed since day dot. Imagine that consistency. Imagine the, the family or the guy who started Coke, how sick he may have been. He might have been, I doubt he's feeling sick. He's probably mopping off his sick with thousand dollar notes. But anyway, the identity hasn't changed. Nothing has changed in Coca-Cola's identity. They got it right from the start. The bottles have changed, of course, because they use different materials now than they did then. The tins have came into play, but the identity and the mark and the red and the thing, everything else that, that they do, right, is totally consistent. And that trust that people have that Coca-Cola is a premium good product is so mind-blowing that it, it overrides any other competitors because they've been going for so long. People know them. They've been drinking them. They're... Their granny was, loves Coca-Cola. That consistency has bred so much trust that they're able to release sub-products and people lap them up immediately. They trust in them. No calories, no sugar. You can see the identity is consistent across this. Whether it's Coke Zero, Diet, or Life. I don't think they sell Life anymore. But you can see the mark isn't changing hardly at all across all of their sub-brands. Consistency, so important. They own that red, you know, um, and it's so powerful. So powerful that the Huffington Post decided to do a blind taste test to see what's going on. So let's get the taste experts on cola. Like, how, how does that even exist as a job? <clears throat> okay, so the tastes were Mexican cola. Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Coca-Cola, 365 Everyday Value Can, and Walgreens Nice Cola. Okay. So in a blind taste test, which one came out on top? And this is the results from a blind taste test. Pepsi, the tastiest cola out of these five. The second tastiest is the nice reflection cola. Third, the Mexican one. Fourth, the 365. And the worst tasting cola to a blind taste test of experts was Coca-Cola. And which one, before you've seen this, if you're a fan of Coca-Cola at all, or cola as a flavor, which you've been going to on the shelves, 100% guarantee 90% of you are going for Coca-Cola. Why do you do that? Because the brand, you trust it. And that's just, that's just the end of the talk. <laughs> good, good sort of case to do the end on. But that proves that getting your identity right, being consistent with it, having creative, truthful messaging, you know, even if it does taste like rubbish, you know, you'll sell tons of it. <laughs> I'm only joking. No, it's uh, been fantastic to, to chat to you all. Um, if there's any questions, as, uh, as we said at the start, you know, we'd be more than happy um, to take any answers on Instagram. Whoa, modern. And um, anything through our, our newly uh, designed website, which is kaizenbrandevolution.com. Go on there and check out our new projects. And there's lovely little forms on there. You can get in touch with us if anyone wants to chat through anything else. But thanks so much. It's been a pleasure.